Welcome to Aligned Drawing Cut Project using Scal 6 and the Caesar Cutter. In this video, I will cover the following. First, how to set up an Aligned Drawing Cut Project in Shortcuts Lot 6. Secondly, how to mount the pen marker holder offered in my accessories catalog. And thirdly, the process for carrying out the drawing cut from Shortcuts Lot 6 to a Caesar Cutter. So here in Shortcuts Lot 6, I set up a very simple design, which is just a swirl from the library and some text. And then I created a shadow layer around the outside. Now then with the design, and I have it grouped uh, together here in one layer, then with this particular group, which is just the design, I made sure the cut line type was set to draw, and then I set a pen color of black. Um, and then for the outside layer, the shadow layer, that's what's going to be cut out. And for it, um, I set it a, a different color and then also gave it a cut line type of cut. Now I need to add one more shape to this project. And this particular shape is something that I have linked in the, the video description so that you can download it. You don't have to recreate it yourself. And then you'll want to save this shape under Documents, Craft Edge, my designs and then that way you'll be able to find it in your library so i'm going to click on library and then this is where i have the shape located right here and i called it l shape caesar so i'm going to click on it and it's nothing more than just kind of like a single reg mark that's oriented like this so that i can place it down here in the corner which represents the origin on a caesar cutter and the reason you need this shape is because um, with the pen marker holder because you can use all different diameters of pens and markers and glue pens and such you can't count on the tip of the 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 pen the you know the nib to be in the exact same location as the blade tip on the blade holder when it gets ready to cut it out and if they are off center then you're not going to end up with this outer shadow layer being perfectly centered around the drawn shape on the inside so we're the process that I came up with is called um, it's called like a shared origin method, and it works. It's very easy, especially when you have a cutter that has a camera on it like the Caesar cutters do. So the next step is to take this particular shape, and I'm going to give it a slightly uh, larger stroke. You don't have to do this part, okay? I'm just doing this just so it shows up on the screen a little bit better. Make it a little bit larger, and under cut line type, I'm going to change it to draw because I need it to also draw just like I did the design, and, I need, and I'm going to set the straight stroke color to be the same, or the pen color in this case, to be the same so that the, uh, so that the, you know, after it does the drawing of, you know, the design or does the drawing of the reg mark, it doesn't stop before it wants you to draw the rest of it, right? You just want to draw all in one step and then just pause for the blade holder change out. But anyhow, I now need to move this shape down to this corner here, which represents the origin on a Caesar cutter. To do that, I come over to my position size panel, I make sure to page is selected, and then I select horizontal line left and vertical line bottom. And when I do that, it's going to put that reg mark right at the origin, you know, to be drawn along with the design. The first step in mounting the pen marker holder is to insert it into uh, the blade holder seat, just as you would the, the regular blade holder, so that this rim is resting on top. Now, in the event you have some sort of odd shaped marker or some other, you know, pen or something, you can also mount it so that the outside rim is on top of this part. It's, it's up to you. But at this point, go ahead and tighten this in nice and tight, but leave this loose. The next step is to slide a coin such as a quarter or a nickel, between the bottom of the pen holder and the top of the material you'll be drawing on. Next, drop your pen or marker through the hole on the pen marker holder. Again, this screw should be nice and loose so that it can freely drop down and the tip of the pen or marker can touch or land down on top of the coin. Then you can tighten this screw nice and firm against the pen so that it can't move up and down while it's drawing. And then finally, be sure to remove the coin before you start doing anything. You don't want to be dragging that coin across the material. So assuming you've already done some testing so you know exactly what settings to use to cut your material and then also what settings you need to use so that your pen will draw on your material, then you're ready to send your project. So I click on the cutter icon and then in this window, um, and here's some of the things that are really important to do. Well, let's start up here. Cut mode, make sure you're on WYSIWYG. Then mark this option, use software speed and force, and enter the settings that you want to use, you know, for cutting. Then make sure you've saved it. Click on this if you haven't already named it. Click on this plus sign and then name, you know, whatever your preset's going to be so that you can later select it. 
Then under draw pen, select draw pen. Uh, make sure you have draw, draw plus. Actually, before you do that, before you do that, set your settings for the force and speed you want. Then make sure you have the prompt for pen color change marks so that it will stop after it draws before it's going to cut. And then in this drop down menu, change to draw, draw plus cut lines. Now then you're ready to start the process. And of course, over on your cutter, make sure you've set the origin wherever you want, you know, the wherever you want this little uh, reg mark to draw. Make sure you've got plenty of room for that. It's not going to draw off of the material. Then click on, and by the way, when I say that, if for some reason you don't want to mark your material, then you can put like a, a sticky note on top or maybe a couple of sticky notes if your pen is like a marker where there's a lot of ink that gets deposited. Um, but anyway, you can you can prevent that just or, you know, a scrap of cardstock on top, just something that is, you know, attached to your material. Okay, so then you're ready to cut. So we're going to go ahead and click on cut. And then this window will pop open and you can verify your settings still look correct. And then what's going to be sent includes both your design and your reg mark. Now, again, if you have a different color selected for your reg mark than your design, that's okay. You can go ahead and click on draw and it will draw one. And then this window will pop up, you know, for the other. And then you can click on draw on that. So I'm going to go ahead and click on draw and the pen goes ahead and it draws the reg mark and it draws my design. And then once it's finished doing that, the pen will return back to the origin. And at this point, then you're going to change out the pen for the blade. But before you go any further, there's a couple of things you need to remember. One is you need to go through the process of adjusting for the fact that the tip of the blade is in a different location than the tip of the pen. So now we're going over to the control panel on the cutter. And we're going to access the camera window by pressing settings, camera, and then press OK in order to take a photo. And in this photo, you're going to see the two blue dashed lines and the intersection of it represents where the blade tip is currently located. But we need to move that blade tip so that's over the intersection of the, uh, you know, the, the pens, uh, registration mark. So to do that, we use the arrow keys to move that red pointer over until it's centered right in the corner of that black registration mark. And then once you get that uh, red pointer located over that corner, then you press OK to take another photo. And then in the new photo, I actually at this point I now zoomed in, which is something you could do originally is go ahead and zoom in so you have a better, you know, view of that corner. And then you can more precisely place that red pointer exactly where you need it to be. So I'm going to move it just over a little bit, move it up a little bit so I can just get it right in the middle. And then I press OK again to take a new photo. And then you'll see that the blue dash lines, just a second here, the blue dash lines are now more centered over that and I can press the up arrow to return back to the main control panel. So earlier when the drawing process stopped or you know completed, this window will have opened this little cut session telling you the cutting data was sent to the cutting machine. You can click on OK. And then this window opens, which is shows that job 202, which shows your shadow layer ready to be cut. Now, very important, this is one of these important things again. Don't forget to change your preset or select your preset for cutting, which is the one that I have right here. Verify that it looks okay, it looks great, and then you're ready to click on cut. And then that will then send this uh, shape over to, uh, to the Caesar cutter to be cut out. And again, this window, you get this cut session window popping open telling you that, that, uh, that all the data was sent to the machine. And then here we have our perfectly aligned cut. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please let me know.